Yes, uh, Honorable Senior Counsel Tenda Mola. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as the other members make their way to the chamber, I rise under standing order number one, as read with standing order number 29. If the Honorable Wamboko Anami will take his seat, I will prosecute my point shortly. Mr. Speaker, understanding order number one, it gives you discretion to give direction on any matter not expressly provided for. Understanding order number 29, it allows a member or members to request the leader of majority and or the leader of minority for a special sitting. Mr. Speaker, as you may recall, a significant number of members, totaling 41, did request a special sitting to discuss the very important matter of non-disbursement of CDF funds in this country. Mr. Speaker, that communication issued on 1st of February and was duly copied to your office. Mr. Speaker, we have today resumed our regular sittings, but without a response or directions on that request. So the first point of direction, Mr. Speaker, is for you to guide where members who themselves are the ones to sit request a special sitting and it is not constituted. How should that request be treated? Mr. Speaker, secondly, your direction on another important thing. On the 5th, on the 5th of December 2023, Mr. Speaker, at the continued push by members, you did issue communication, having been given information that the funds would be disbursed uh, before the end of December. That was on 5th of December. It now appears, Mr. Speaker, that the Cabinet Secretary for Treasury may have misled our Speaker. Where a Cabinet Secretary who is answerable to this House misleads the leader of this House, how should we treat that? Mr. Speaker, I know that we are yet to constitute the House Business Committee. But Mr. Speaker, this is an important matter where we need direction because the directions that we are given or we take may well constitute our consideration of whether the House Business Committee has proposed is appropriate or not. Uh, Mr. Speaker, with respect, I do not imagine what other businesses we can be discussing when Kenyans are at home, students are at home, because we've not dispersed those funds. Mr. Speaker, without that, I think this sitting should be suspended until further notice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, honorable members. Honorable Otienda Amolo, Senior Council. You have a legitimate point, but your prescription is unnecessarily drastic. We can resolve the issue without suspending our sitting, particularly on day one, when we want, in fact, to facilitate you to move the motion, if you wish, for members to debate. Number one, the letter you wrote, you addressed to the majority leader and the minority leader, only copied to Mr. Speaker. And it's those two leaders who would have then motioned the Speaker to call for a special sitting. None of them did. Order. Order, honorable members. Order. So it is not within, it is not within the Speaker's competence to call for a special sitting. It's within the Speaker's competence to convene a special sitting when he has been motioned by a member and it's the leadership but it's now what under the bridge we are sitting anyway so we can allocate you time at an appropriate time not today so that you can discuss this important issue today being the first day order cnn i'm sure you know the standing orders today being the first day we don't have a house business committee so there is no business that has been approved and designated to be transacted. Understanding order number one, today after we've
clear the motion on house business, I will only exercise my discretion to allow the woman rep for Elgeo Maraquet to make a statement on the tragedy that befell one of our most rising athletic stars. It will be a very short statement. I have approved it for the CDF issue. Tomorrow, if you wish, you can uh, file a motion of adjournment and I'll give you time to debate. But before we do that, I think we will allow the majority leader tomorrow to bring a statement on the issue of disbursement of CDF. I did see a letter written to Mr. Speaker from the Treasury, and I passed it on to the clerk, detailing how the Treasury intends to disburse your CDF and conclude before the next financial year like they did last year. As to the timings, it's administrative, and I leave it to the majority leader, who is your interface with the government, to handle and report to the House tomorrow morning. It's so directed. Yes, Wangari. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise to just seek your clarification on the communication that you gave, especially on the lapse of business. Yes. And this is specific to questions, yes. being that this is a new model where we have the Cabinet Secretaries come here and answer questions. And my question and clarification, Mr. Speaker, is that what happens if you file a question and there is no other interest? And I say that because I filed a question to the Cabinet Secretary for Gender, Culture and Arts in April last year. But there has been no other member interested to warrant the CS to come. Why would I be disenfranchised as a member because I was queuing to actually kill that business, yet it was not responded to? I would like your clarification on that, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Majority Leader, you've heard what uh, the Honorable Member for Gilgil has said, that in bringing ministers to this House, it matters not how many questions have been filed. I think give each dog an opportunity to have a bite. So bring ministers regardless of the number of questions so that each minister can come and face the house and supplementaries may arise therefrom. So that, uh, of course, priority gives, goes to those with heavy questions and many questions, but even those with one question like Wangare's question, you can edge them in for 10, 15 minutes, they finish, then you go to the ones with more questions.